Hey everybody, it's October 11th and it's Wednesday. You're here at the DEI um, Working Group for Chaos. Hey Anita, we can drop the minutes in here for you. There you go. Um, yeah, everybody mostly knows this, but I will say it just in case. Um, this meeting, like all other meetings at Chaos, is under the Chaos Code of Conduct. So just keep that in mind as you interact with us today. And obviously, cameras on or off, we don't care at all. You're welcome to chat with us over on the side in the chat. Um, raise your hand or just blurt it out, like whatever. We are super flexible, super easy here. So whatever makes you happy, however you prefer to interact with us is totally fine with us. I will share my screen. This is the meeting where we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, kind of of all of all things at Chaos, not just metrics, but um, it kind of is kind of a, a place where the, all of those kind of conversations happen. So, if you haven't added your name and you would like to do that, you are welcome to, and I will add mine. Uh, I had this Winnie the Pooh um, stuffed animal that I left on an airplane when I was a kid, devastated, devastated. And so I was on um, Etsy one day and I don't know what I was looking for, but it, somehow it kind of came in my radar, the one that looked exactly like it. And this is like from the seventies, you know? So it was like this old school, kind of weird actually. <laughs> As an adult, I'm like, wow, that's, that's kind of weird looking, but um, so I bought it. <laughs> I bought it. So now I have a, an exact replica and I just bought it like it's like six months ago. So yeah, and maybe that's weird, I don't know. I just felt some kind of closure in my life. I don't know. Is that weird? Maybe. Where is it? Uh, it's in my it's in my room in my bedroom, but in the closet because <laughs> it was just a little weird. I don't know. I don't know. I was like, I don't know what to do with this. Like, do I put it on my bed? Do I? Welcome to my house. You right. Get to go <laughs> in my closet. Right. Here's my. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. I do. I do still love it and yeah just from afar from afar now so apparently you can sell it on etsy and you can yeah i don't know where it came from but yeah it was awesome I, I was really happy to get it okay sorry we can go on to actual things now um yeah we can talk about my weirdness all day thank you anita for saying it's not weird i appreciate you thank you <laughs> i feel i feel good okay so yeah. first I <laughs> So first up on the agenda is project badging, and I'm going to let Matt speak to this since he's the one who did the work. Yeah, sure. So, um, so as you all know, we're, we're just kind of wrapping up a lot of the pilot work with project badging, um, and we had an, an original DEI.md file, you know, that we had kind of created over the course of the last, there you go, perfect that we had created over the course of the last, whatever, year. And so this file um, kind of, it contains a couple things. One, it contains things that projects are meant to include in their DEI.md file. So for example, include your project name, include a description of your DEI.md file, like the scope of it and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then it, it also included samples of what a project could say with respect to like how a project attends to project access. See what I'm saying? So like we were trying to say, here's the template and here are maybe a few examples that you could provide. So we were kind of collapsing the template that we want projects to use along with the guide on how to actually fill out the DEI.md file. And it was, I don't know if it was creating confusion. It was just, there was a recommendation to split these two apart. And so if you could go back to the minutes. So if you click on template.dei, I'll start there. So this would be just like the markdown that a project could take to build their, you see how it's much simpler? Like this is the markdown a project could take to build their dei.md file. It's, and if you go to like to raw, yeah. Like this is just, it's a copy and paste at this point that a project could use. And see the other one wasn't really copy and paste, you know, cause there was all that other stuff in it. And so now go back. 
and I just did this yesterday. So I, I, there's a few things that I still just want to sort out. All right, so I think that's all good. So now I'll go back to the guide.dei. And so this is a guide as to how to author that template document. So at the top, they have descriptions on, like these used to be at the bottom of the file. And so I thought I'd move them to the top just so it's a little bit clearer. Um, and we could say like how to author your project's DEI.md file. We could work on the text a little bit. But the first uh, three points are really just about like where you should put your DEI.md file, like recommendations for it. So you would put it in, you know, an organizationally, public organizationally available repository. Um, you would put it in a community repository. And if you, you know, we recommend you put it on your website as well. You know, so those are three places where we kind of recommend you put it. Um, the sample DEI uh, project statement indicates, and I'm trying to indicate what's required, like what, what lines are required and what lines would be just sample lines for people. So if this isn't clear, honestly, just, I'm, I'm okay with you saying it's not clear and we'll talk through required and sample here in a little bit. Um, I do say your project has to attend to all metrics below and have at least one described effort with each metric. So if you, know, you do need to talk about how your project is addressing say, for example, project access. Number six says always replace project name with the name of your project. You know, just we don't have a lot of square bracket project names all over the place. Um, and then I do say, don't use this file to create it. Go download the template when creating your, your DEI file. So, okay, so then this is just a sample. So what I'm saying here, and hopefully, let me know if this is clear or not clear. What I'm trying to say here is the title DEI project statement is required and you don't change that. That's what I'm saying by saying required, no changes. And then the next line is in include your project name and logo here. That's required. You have to do that, but changes will necessarily be, be required because every project's a little bit different. The next one is required changes needed. So we've talked about this a little bit. The DEI.md file can have a variety of different scopes. So there are um, organizations like at GitHub and that organization, like the top level organization represents the project. And so we, you would say this DEI.md file represents the chaos organization, for example, because chaos kind of runs as a single project under one organization. There are certainly situations where the organization is really just a, a structural element. It's not a project. And underneath that organization, each repository is really its own project. So there are certainly scenarios where that's the case. And so I'm just, all we're asking is that you would say this DEI.md file covers this entire organization or this DEI.md file covers this single repository or this DEI.md file covers this collection of repositories. Just, we, we weren't able to sort this out in the application process just because of all of this variability so what we're asking for is for people to declare the scope of their DEI.md file in this, all right? So that's required changes needed. The next one I say required no changes. So we just want this statement. Our project prioritizes and reflects on DEI. So this is a statement that is just supposed to be in there with a link out to the chaos project, all right? The next is a link to project access, required no changes. So hopefully you get where this is going, required no changes. And then the seven that are there are samples. Like these are ways that your project may or may not address project access. They're just samples. If you have eight, nine or 10, whatever, there could be different than this, that's fine. These are just to get, I think part of the challenge we were having was just helping projects like think about what could be applicable in this scenario. And we don't we don't really look for anything in the scan as to how a project does it. We're just hoping that a project can represent that 
And then the same would hold true for communication transparency, newcomer experiences. You just you, at this point we can just go through all the metrics. You know what I mean? It's just keep these. Here are some samples. Keep these. Here are some samples. And then a statement at the end that says that we recognize that this does not guarantee um, a safe or inclusive community. This is not this this file doesn't do that, do that. Um, but it signals that we as a project are committed to centering DEI in our project and regularly like regularly review our DEI practices. So this is it's meant to to signal that requires uh, changes needed just because there has to be a link to the code of conduct. So um, if you don't feel that the D, you know, if a project puts forward a DEI.md file and they say they're doing all these things and you're like, oh, I don't think <laughs> I'm a project, I'm a member of that project. And what they say and what they're doing are very two different things that you could contact your code of conduct um, team to raise concerns that what is actually expressed. And so that's kind of where the audit you know, the evaluation of the DEI.md file comes in and then last reviewed, you know, just entering a date. So required changes needed. So I guess um, some feedback, thoughts on, on this design. Yeah, Ruth. Okay, uh, thank you, Matt, for putting this together. I think it gives, it's really well detailed and kind of gives a lot of context to what we are asking from the project and just before this meeting I had a conversation with Enoch um you know you remember you asked me if the if the bot scans for gibberish um on the like the headers right and it's it actually does scan for that in a way in the sense that it scans for the exact header that we put in there like for example the um project asset those headers are must be that way so i think having those in bracket required no changes um you know it's it helps them not change like say for example instead of project assets the right assets project or change something or so it's it's it really helps give context into having those headers remain the same so that the bot will successfully scan their project and when i think when the headers tweak maybe we can add this somewhere in this guide just explicitly saying that um please do not change these headers right because when when the headers change right the bot returns an error which i think i just had that conversation with enough that we can modify that error to you know make them aware that we need the, the headers Right, to for the bot to be to successfully scan the their project. Um, then another thing I wanted to say is, um, while this is quite like why this is very detailed, the guide is very detailed and you know gives me a lot of context. We can add a link to you know the chaos, the chaos um di.md file as like a real life example. Um, for people to also look at, you know, to just get, okay, yeah, this is um, an example from the Chaos Project. So, yeah, those are the additions I have on um, your comments. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Those are both, uh, both can be accommodated and are great ideas. Um, hey. I I just want to know um, if someone is going to, to fill in a di.md file, what what are they using as a template? The guide template di.md. Oh yeah, there it is. That. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the other one is just to help them fill out um, what yeah. particular information could be yep. inside. Yeah. It's just the guides. Yep. All right. Okay. Okay, yeah, um, I think um, Ruth has been stating out some of the things I wanted to inquire. Okay, sounds good. I'm actually, I, uh, do other people have comments on this? At least, like, in the comments could be like, I look at this and I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> or I look at this and it's helpful. I, 
Elizabeth, did you have a comment? I was just going to actually, not to put you on the spot, Sarah, but as someone who has not really seen this before, is this completely overwhelming or does it kind of make sense? And again, I don't want to put you on the spot. So if you don't know, that's also valid. That's also totally valid. Uh, I must admit that I uh, I had a nosy at the last meeting, so it's not completely uh, completely new to me. Um, yeah, I think I, I understand what you're trying to achieve by um, keeping the original um, templates separated out and, and really simple, uh, and that you've got this this one for the extra guidance and also um, it, it's able to show some recommendations as to what you would like to portray as best practices and things. So I think that's nice. Um, yeah, I, I think it's not, it should, it hopefully, uh, it shouldn't be too complicated. So um, okay. I think it's, <laughs> It should That's be good. all right. Yeah. Um, okay, right on. I had a few questions then that maybe mm -hmm. Sarah or anybody could, could kind of answer. So um, if you scroll, okay, so actually see right above project access where it says required no changes. Do you think we should keep that as no changes? I'm basically going to ask you about the no change statements. Okay, so like, um, would you sure. see yourself wanting? Would you see yourself wanting to change that statement, or is that okay? Oh, good question. Uh, I think it's fine because what you're trying okay. to establish is that. Uh, this is a set of standards via mm -hmm. chaos um, and yep. that we as a project are um, trying to align to these standards. Uh, I think okay. yep. from my perspective, it would be okay. I, I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I know. I, I'm just, it's, yeah, no, this is cool. Yeah. And then if you okay, okay. scroll down to the bottom, just all the way to the required statements I have down there. You know, the required no changes. So the first one that is, you know, like we recognize that this is not a guarantee of safety yeah. or inclusivity. I We talked about this one quite a bit and I, my inclination was to have this no changes because I don't want people to remove this. Yep, yeah. I'm, I'm happy. I think okay. that's fair. Um, and then also the reporting, do you think anybody again too, do you think we, we, we talked about this a lot too, that we do need a way for people to report like community members to say, this thing is not right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, do you think I should just leave this as is, um, perhaps add the only thing I thought about was adding like, um, to raise concerns with your code of conduct team or other relevant team responsible for this with that. I, I think that's maybe think? fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause I, it's possible that people may not have a code of conduct team. I think like not every project does. Okay. Yeah, Mark, um, uh, yeah. I, I don't know whether I did catch that. Uh, what do you mean by required then no changes and then required changes needed? Yeah, sure. So required no changes are statements that have to stay as is. Okay. And required changes needed. If you could scroll up a little bit, Elizabeth. Yeah. So like we have, yeah, like required changes needed, like your project name. So we would naturally need the project to make changes to that line. Okay. Matt, I know we and say then, you can always replace, but this is a little bit confusing to me because we're saying no changes, yeah. but then also you're making a change. 
by adding yeah, that's, this. Absolutely. That's what I was going to point out that um, I see on the third line, there is um, no changes, but then um, you have in the square brackets, um, something okay. like project name. Maybe maybe, so, maybe there should be like a key somewhere to all a better way to represent that. I'm not quite sure. Or just say just this put, project. You just need it. What's that, Matt? We could just say changes needed. Or say this project. Yeah, we could also just say this project. Our project. Yeah, our I like our project. Why don't we do that? Okay. That's a little funnier. Okay, so I'm gonna put that here. When we do that, we we add chain the note should be wherever we see project name in a line that says no changes. Yes, replace with our project. Yep, I'm good with that. That way they can just leave that in. Yep, they don't have to, yep. That is in the template, right? Yeah, okay. So we'd have to change the template too. Yeah, okay, I'll put that. That's okay. These are like the little things just to get these aligned and sorted out, which is, yep. these are not big deals. Okay, and then the other thing that um, I was thinking about this morning was right now I have template.dei.md and guide.dei.md. Do you think that we should simply name template.dei.md as like remove template and just call it dei.md? So here's the dei.md file. <laughs> And here's a guide to filling out the DEI.md file. What do y'all think of that? I saw a nodding from Sarah. I, yeah, the only thing that might be confusing is if we have, like in this repo, we had a DEI.md file for that repo that would apply to that repo. You know what I'm saying? Like template makes it very clear that oh. that is not an actual DEI.md file. But this might be like, oh, this must be the DEI.md file for project badging. So like project badging would be the only project on the planet that would potentially have this problem. Yes. <laughs> so it would. Okay. But I would I I don't know, like if somebody's coming here, not I, yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm making it more <laughs> more difficult. But this, this, but in this repo, I would like to at this point. Point, get rid of the dei.md file unless we actually create our own for project badging yeah i don't want i don't want that file lingering correct the DEI.md because it's such a it's such a mashup of the other two yeah and i don't want people ending up there just, just even by accident because they'd be like oh this is like that's not where we want to guide people I, I just my personal feeling is that this is makes it clear what that is, whereas this there might be a little bit of confusion is that the DEI for the project or is that the DEI I'm supposed I see. to you know. But you're right, it would just be in this <laughs> in this repo would be the only place that that would be confusing so I don't know. Um, Anita was plus one I think agreeing with you Elizabeth so I mean I'm, I'm happy to keep it as template it was really just it was just a question I guess. And we can just see how it goes as well. Also fair, because this whole thing is a big experiment anyway. So yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, I think we have a few things to add. It was really helpful. And I know yeah, Elizabeth. Um, uh, yeah, Enoch. I'm really so much tempted to see how a bud reflects on any of the repositories that have a DEI.md file that's been scanned. But I think depending on the previous interactions we've had of not modifying any repository content of projects, I think it may not be possible unless we go back into that discussion once again. But I feel like um, if there is um, a scan that has happened, um, probably if someone lands on the di.md file first before they know about where the badging website, the project badging website is, there should be a link somewhere to like show um, 
because I was looking at the template.di.md and I saw like last reviewed and then there is like a date and then I was thinking, okay, could there be something like check out our badge somewhere here, but we left that to the maintainers to see where to publicize their badge from. But well, it, it's just something I'm thinking about in terms of um, having um, the badge easily accessible to other people who may not know that there is a whole project badging website. And they're like only in the github.com. Right, they only um, end up here. Platform. Yeah. yeah. Because we, we 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 have a whole table, a table of um, budget projects, and probably maybe we could even modify it to have specific um, pages for particular projects to reflect the budgets and maybe even if um, in future they would want to make their reports public. You never know. But I was just making sure that if someone doesn't know about the project budgeting, how do we? find a way of putting that somewhere here in their repository. I think it could be a discussion what for... Mm -hmm. What if we go back, go back to the project badging folder, Elizabeth? What if we created a folder in here called like DEI MD files? Uh, and we moved, we moved... Good. Well, well, I, I don't think I would, I would, I would, I would make it that abstract. <laughs> well, my, so part of me, I don't. Right now, we're these two files create kind of a longer list of things that are just in this top level. Uh, guide.di.md, template.di.md, and di.md. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so for 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 Ruth, I didn't catch that. No, I yeah, think we can take the di.md one because, like, it doesn't since we have to the guide and then the templates, the d the di.md one doesn't serve any purpose anymore. So it does not. You are correct. Yeah, and I think Correct. on the front end team, I just realized um, that's if the if the if the position um, of that template is not going to change, we can change our URLs in the website so that they can point to the right template. I think Elizabeth has changed those, or Ruth maybe. No. No, no I just changed it on the website. I'm that's there the right now, and. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. There are some changes that still need to happen on the website, even like the templates is not added yet, like that text. So, okay, yeah. So, we probably want to add some text on the website that says use this template when creating your MD fi DEI.MD file and um, use this guide, use the template and guide. I like how Elizabeth navigates to go to where the budging website is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is the one on. Oh, sorry. Who am I interrupting? I'm so sorry. No, no, no. That's not the. Let me say. <laughs> right. Know, this is uh, the only all in website. This is the one that I put the submitted a request to change. This is the one that the all in folks maintain. This is not the application place. But oh, I just want to point out there is a difference. Like, this is the page that goes in with all of the other all in stuff. And it, this links to the form that people fill out to be in the pilot. Okay, yeah. so this will eventually change to the all-in website or the badging website. Does that make okay. sense to everybody? Yeah. Yes. So. And so on this page right now, Elizabeth, is there anything that kind of points to the template or a guy? I see there's DEI.MD up at top. I submitted, well. yeah, I submitted a request to Kyle, who's the one that runs this part, um, to make I those see. changes yesterday. So he'll probably make them today. I see. Okay. So then can you go to the application page. Yes. So here we'll probably need to make a few text changes. Yes. So they're like, check the DEI that will just point to the template. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
and and guide probably. Mm -hmm. You know, check do out the DEI MD file template. Do we need to document these changes somewhere, or Enoch and Ruth, you you got it. Oh yeah, I can open an issue just to like okay. And then I mean, below I mean, it would be like follow this guide when creating your DEI.md file or something like that. <laughs> to to Enoch's point earlier, maybe we could also put something in this because we are adding a thing that says if you are uh, where was that? If the project plans to apply for a badge, the ex, you know the headers must be exact. So maybe we can say something or link to the application in this statement or something like that. Does am I making sense? Where, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where would that go? So that so this piece right here is going to be put it in another bullet in the guide at the top here um, to make sure uh -huh. that they know that those headers have to be exact. Yes, I have that down. Okay, yeah. and so like in that statement, we could also say if you do plan to apply for a badge, here's where you would do that. Just in case somebody comes on that file. To Enix I, point, I, I see I see what you're saying. It gotcha. comes yeah, easy here. enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I think um, th there should be there should be some awareness somewhere that, hey, you need yep. to maybe make an application somewhere and well, well, well. I think that's uh, another submission that is relevant uh, on top of what I had submitted. That well, if the if the review is done, then how does someone who stumbles upon this di.md file yeah. know that? Oh, actually, um, there has been some Resolve. review done on this file. Mm -hmm. Yep, I like it. Well, well, um, I think, I think, I think it's a, it's a. I don't, I don't know, I don't know how this discussion would go of how to do that and where to place it. Initially, it was so easy when we were saying, yeah, well, we shall just enforce that and, and um, edit the di don't md file or readme file and place our badge there. But since we left a lot of um, freedom for them to put it wherever they want, it now becomes. Um, I think um, a long deliberation on how to do that. Yeah, I think I think it's okay if they don't even post the badge or if they post it wherever. I mean, that's kind of how we've been with the events. Like we give them the badge and then they can do with it what they will. If they put it on the website, great. If they put it on their repos, great. If they don't choose to put it anywhere, great. Like that's fine. It's kind of out of our hands at that point. Um, so I, maybe we can just end the process there to your point, Enoch, because I think it's going to be really hard to indicate that somebody has gone through the process if we don't have access to their DEI.md file or anything like that, which we probably shouldn't have anyway, so. Okay, I think then um, that's the easiest solution. <laughs> We we love easy solutions. <laughs> right. <laughs> Definitely. I mean Elizabeth That's has just said like we can just end it there and assume the process has ended. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, and Anita, to your point, I think that that is kind of what Ruth was gonna open an issue about because those these files are brand new, the template and guide, like Matt just did them last night. So uh, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Sweet. When you put in there too. I think they can just point to the GitHub repo. Like on the if you go to the badging application page. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering if this is confusing for people because this is the actual website files for the project badging for this website right here. Is yeah. that confusing? That we, uh, I I think um, sometimes it confuses me too, but I think I got yours after a long time. I don't know about others. 
And like, what should this read me? Is this read me? I'm okay. I think the read me is good. Okay. But but I do think go back to the to the batching page itself. Um, this guy right here. Yeah. So, like that, check the DEI .md file template. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That should just link to the GitHub repo to the actual page. Yeah, to the apply page or get started page, right? It would just yeah. So it would just take them to the go back to GitHub to this file, to right? The template. It'll just take them right there. Yeah. Okay. Click on okay. Page. Okay. I thought you meant just here. No, no, no. no. It'll take them. Okay. To the temp to the markdown page. Yeah, yeah. It will link to this. Yep. Oops. Okay. Well, I think we, I can just I can just make that change while we are on another call while we while we are on another discussion. I think it's not hard to just change the link. Yeah, we probably could do it in here somewhere. Yeah. Oh, I did um see a little uh typo. Where's the guide? Got it. I wanted to make sure just right here. Right here. So I'll put that in our list. Teeny, teeny typo in number two. Um, Hamza, I'm going to mute you because there's a little bit of background noise on you. Sorry, buddy. Any other um, comments, questions, anything? about project badging. Okay, all right. Do we want to do a demo? How do we feel about that? Yay, with an email <laughs> from me. <laughs> yeah. that, was a, <laughs> that was a little hesitation, I feel, on your part. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we I have hijacked the whole uh, DI meeting but i'll just be pretty quick so let me let me share my screen i'm sharing the right screen um, yeah and someone should give me access to that document that sarah shared um not this sarah uh the other sarah shared a document with the email passwords i just want to test out some some stuff so if someone has like uh access i don't know yeah i'll give you access to that um but yeah, let me share. Oh my god, I have so many screens open. I don't know which one I'm sharing. Oh um, we can edit this recording if you share the wrong one. It's no big deal. <laughs> We've done it before. <laughs> okay, so I think this. Ooh, um, what do you see? A black screen. Nothing. Hmm. Weird. Um, you see me share. Oh, and try again. I'll just log into the database here. To oh, check I see. I, I think I was trying to do a an incognito screen, but it doesn't. I don't think maybe Zoom allows that to share incognito. Maybe that's why it's black. I didn't know that. What do you see now? Black screen. Nothing. Oh, why? Black, really? Tech girl today <laughs> is being screwed. <laughs> Okay. How about now? Hey, oh, there it yeah. is. We see your good afternoon, Ruth screen. Okay, so let me hide it's good afternoon. Yeah, okay. Then let's see budging. Okay. All right. So so basically the projects, like for example, um a project wants to apply for a badge or Back to the pilot process, um, they would go to badging.allinopensource.org. That's the website for badging. And then they would click on 
you know, after reading all the details and everything, right, they'll click on get started. And we have the like prerequisites um for the project maintainer to have that DI.mb file in their repository that they are applying for. And then the project must be open source. I think it's a, we say it twice, have that DI MB file. <laughs> they don't miss it. So um the next step is authenticating with GitHub. So it would redirect to GitHub authentication. I already do have this working. So originally you have to like put in your web your your login details and all that stuff. Um but yeah, so this is where we would search for the project repository. So I'm going to use chaos because I have access to chaos um slash community and we have the we have the di.md file in the chaos project so i'm just going to search up chaos slash community so this is the the, the report that we have the di.md file so i'm badging chaos yay i would you like double to... click yeah double click on then... the ux feature i think i'm uh... Yeah, I, I usually do one click. My laptop is so cool. Okay, so. <laughs> so you double click on the project that you want to buy, and we're only scanning one project at a time. So it will click on scan project, and then it scans the repository, and it emails you know, um, the project maintainer. So, successful scan so i'm just going to stop share for a minute and show my email my email is a mess yes. yeah it can confirm in the database that the scan is there well you know you're still in my shine just hold on don't say yes your shine yes did you say you're stealing my shine? <laughs> <Is that> <laughs> yes. Really, Ina? Come on. It's Ruth's time. Okay, let me, let me share. Let me share back. <laughs> so, yeah, so you can see the um, email from Enoch. It's not from me. It's not supposed <laughs> to be Enoch. We're still we're still working on this to have like an official email but yeah so this is the email that the, the project maintainer will get so congratulations and we have like the bronze badge applied like in markdown and also in html in case they they want to like showcase it on their website or wherever they want to put it um and so we we also notify them that they would receive like the supplemental inclusivity reports from Ogor. And that is it. We we have like a very pretty logo here, but yeah. Um, I, I think I think um depending on your email client, I'm yet to hack how Gmail really sieves out what kind of um images it shows in uh, emails, but the other email clients um I use uh like Thunder. Uh, they really show those images so well. I really don't know what's wrong, and probably sometime when I crack that, it will be good to put some nice branding there, but it's not on my end for now. Okay, okay, I see. Okay, no problem. Then I see Matt's comment about removing the supplementary. Okay, let me see. Oh, okay, that works. So that's that's the whole process of applying for the badge. So, yay. Yeah, and um, maybe some other thing. Um, I, I I think we separated the process of getting the emails. The, 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 there are two emails to be received, and the other one is for the other report that comes from Agar. So once that process happens, um, the same submission is submitted through the Agar API to continue with the, with the scans so that um you get a very robust um a very robust um report i don't know Matt saying yeah Matt, yeah Matt has a comment about removing the supplementary report part for now so i think oh okay like in the in the content of the email yeah yeah it's just a it's just a a scaling thing so let's first make okay. sure that the 
the DEI scan and email works. Like, let's make sure that oh. that, and then like after a month or two, when we're satisfied that that's going all good, then we'll start adding the report stuff back in. Yeah, yeah. I think I also I seen a comment from me. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, I just I, don't want to do it once and then something breaks somewhere and. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I, I love to do those on the fly, those simple things. So I'll do those straight away. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and thanks, Yiga, for the for the for the for for that. Like there is a typo. Yeah, thank you, Yiga. We'll fix that. Um, but yeah, so that's the process. And if there are any questions or like feedback, yes, we'd love to take to implement. We're just doing some finishing touches of the website, so there's still some like it's awesome. Thank you <laughs> for everything, all of you, everyone. I especially like the idea that it comes from Enoch, so Enoch will get all the questions. Uh, thank you, thank you, Enoch. <laughs> all right, Enoch. Yeah. Oh my god! Um, we are actually running out of time. Uh, we are at time, so we did have a couple more things on the agenda, which we will just. Um, yeah, we'll just defer to next week. I don't think there's anything pressing. So um, thanks again for showing up, everybody. It was so good to see you. And hopefully we'll see you here next week. Same time, same place. Have a good rest thanks of your day. Everybody. Thank you, Ruth and Enoch, too, for that awesome demo. Really appreciate you all. And we'll see you all later. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.